Hello, my name is Ashley and welcome to Create Craft Costume. Today we are going to be making a Harry Potter Amortentia Valentine's Day sign. The best part about this Valentine's Day decoration is that it either all came from the Dollar Tree or the items cost a dollar. If you would like to see how to put this together, please continue watching. All right, let's get started with this project. The first thing that you're gonna need is you're, you're going to need to find one of these Happy Valentine's Day signs. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is remove the front sign. And it's funny, because some of these were like falling off in stores, like, I literally saw them at the bottom of the display, but this one actually seems to be on really good. All right, perfect. Okay, so I am gonna use this later, so I'm just setting this aside. And if you wanted to clean this up, you could, but I don't want my potion to have grooves in it, so I'm actually gonna turn this to the back. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the ribbon, specifically because I'm going to be painting it. And so the ribbon will be put back on, which is why I'm gonna cut it close to here. But I'm gonna paint the holes, uh, or I'm gonna paint over the entire surface, and I will hang it again later. So the colors that I'm gonna be using today are actually just ones that I had around the house, so it's not like you have to go out and buy specific ones. I'm also gonna be mixing some. And all of these are either folk art or apple barrel paint. And this one is fuchsia, bright pink, and white. And I'm actually just gonna play and see what I like. I got this really, really big brush from Ross, which makes painting large sections really, really nice. So the bright pink is a little brighter than what I wanted. So I will probably be lightening that up a bit. Now let's see. This is the fuchsia. So, and as you can probably see while they're going on, I'm not even sure if you can tell on camera, these are super similar colors. Even if you see on here, this one's just a little bit lighter than this one is. And as you can also see, this is gonna take multiple coats, but that's okay. Here we go. This is more of what I was looking for. So all I did was I took the extras of that dark, bright pink, and I'm mixing it with a little bit of white. And I'm actually gonna put this on really, really thick because I do wanna get some blending and some shading in here. This is just the first coat. And something that I want to note is yes, I'm sure you can see the brush strokes on here. Um, I'm assuming they're pretty obvious which for this particular uh, project, I am okay with, specifically because this is trying to look like a glass bottle. So as long as you move the brush strokes in what would be the shape of the bottle, I actually think it's gonna give it a lot more added dimension. And now we're gonna wait for this dry to dry and we'll come back. Okay, so I mixed some more paint off screen and like I said, or you don't have to mix paint at all. You can absolutely go buy the shade that you want. I just really didn't want to have to buy more paint, especially when it's so easy to add white to colors. Um, but now all I'm doing is coming in and adding a second coat. And you can see that there are some white streaks coming in, which again, for me is fine because I wanted that dimension. If you want it to be perfectly flat, you'll either want to mix the paint better before you put it on, or you're going to want to, to purchase the tone that you want immediately and there'll be no mixing involved. 
So this took about three coats to get to the coverage and um, depth that I wanted. Now I know chalk paint wouldn't take as much, but again, I didn't want to buy new paint. So use whatever paint works for you. And now while the hot glue gun is dry or is warming up, I want to talk about what we are going to be gluing into the middle of this. This is just a foam wreath that comes like this just from the Dollar Tree. They are kind of fragile as you can see, but since we're just going to be hot gluing it on here anyway, I um, am not worried about the back. With that being said, anything with glitter, I do try and, and hit with hairspray ahead of time, but this one is just, it's got different sizes of glitter, so this was a little bit more difficult. But in order to prep it, since I will not be hanging this one, I am going to take the ribbon and the tag off. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna be hanging this, so I don't know if I can even just pull this out, but it's not coming. No, it's not coming super easily. So instead, I'm actually gonna tuck that ribbon right back in, just right there. So I just tucked the ribbon down into the hole right there, and then I'm gonna put hot glue on the back, and I'm just gonna stick it right in the middle of this. So I'm going to set this aside and then we are actually going to work on our plaque or sorry, no, we're going to work on our base. So if you look at M. Hortensia, there is, especially if it's like a standing one, there's a little triangle base at the bottom of that jar because obviously a heart can't stand on a point. So I was looking for things at Dollar Tree that could form a triangle. And if you were lucky enough to get those triangle uh, shadow boxes, you could actually take one of the backs of those out and use it as the base. However, I actually have plans with that. So instead, I got this over at the uh, teacher section. And I thought I could cut this down and make this into a base instead. One of the... Uh, quote unquote problems is since this is plastic, like a very, like a definite plastic, like a water resistant plastic, uh, the paint was not drying and not staying very well. And when it did, it also scraped tremendously. So if you want to use one of these instead of say like a, a chipboard or something like that, I'm going to cover this instead with scrapbook paper. And this is actually also from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a three pack. So first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to cut this in half because I want that classic triangle shape. This I think is gonna be a little bit too big for what I want. So let's pull this back here. And when I say a stand, I want it to look something like this. And yeah, I don't want these to come out as far as they do. So I'm actually gonna cut um, probably an inch and a half off of this to make this triangle smaller and more manageable. So that would actually be a benefit of using this sign instead of a harder material, is you can form the triangle to the exact size that you would like. Yeah, I think that's much more manageable. So I'm going to take this and trace this out on this paper and cover this in scrapbook paper before gluing this onto the back side. Now to glue this on, especially because this is not paper on paper, I actually got a new adhesive for Christmas and I want to try this out. So I'm going to put the gray mat back under here so it doesn't ruin my nice cutting mat and uh, then we will spray and connect these together. I am just using a spray E6000 and testing how this works. It does say it's good for crafting on here 
And the other reason that I personally am choosing to pick a full spray adhesive rather than just like a glue stick, which of course you can do, is because since this is going to be on the back, um, I really don't want any of these corners coming up. This, is, this isn't going to be on like a flat scrapbook page, you know, and um, it's not going to be in like a, a protector or something like that. So something that I can tell already is I'm going to need to hold this and hold this in place. So I will probably, since E6000 is not immediate, I will have to let this dry uh, some time, which is not a problem because again, I really, really don't want these edges coming up. And as far as anything showing on the edges, remember everything up here is going to be behind that heart. However, anything down here is going to be below it. So this is where I'm really concentrating on not having potentially any yellow show. And as you saw, that did take a little while to cut to, uh, to press down, but it is actually getting there. And I do think I will be really happy with this just because, like I said, I don't want these separating like that. So while I did get it attached, I'm actually going to let this set since that's what most E6000 is. So I'm going to turn this over, put something heavy on it, and I will let this set overnight before gluing it to the back of our heart. Okay, now that the base is drying and we're waiting to apply it, now we're going to work on the plaque or the banner. Remember, this is what we took off the front of the heart. And I, I can't just reuse the back because there's some damage to it. So I personally do not like burlap. So there's no reason for me to want to pay or paint, sorry, paint over this. However, I do think I'm just going to put, I'm going to do exactly the same and I'm going to put a piece of cardstock. I want it to look like parchment. So I'm going to go with one of these colors and I did actually pick up these from Craft Crafters Square in the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to pick out the color, trace it, and go from there. Okay, now that our pieces have dried for the appropriate amount of time, we're going to work on uh, designing our label before we glue these pieces on. Now, Dollar Tree does sell sticker packs, but I have so many around my craft room that I'm just using something that I have on hand. These are called chipboard letters, and then I just grabbed a pack of black stickers, and I'm going to spell Amortentia across this label. You may have noticed in my previous shots that I seem to be making two of them and that actually is correct. I am making one for my friend and then one for myself. And something that I noticed while I was putting on these stickers, these stickers do come from Joann's and I don't know if it's the paper or the stickers themselves, but I had a really, really hard time getting them to stay on this paper. And remember this paper was from the, the cardstock was from Dollar Tree. So I just wanted to make people aware of that because this was, I ended up hand brushing all of the letters on individually. And that was something that was a little more time consuming than I had originally anticipated. Not that it's not worth it. It's just something that I want people to be aware of if they decide to go the sticker route instead of maybe purchasing a label or um, maybe using a Cricut or Silhouette. Now, this one I decided to go with a chipboard letter, and I actually really like the chipboard letter on this as well because I like that the A is different, but I'm also really, really tempted to just use the capital A and make all of the Amortentia the same. 
I'm not going to because I do like that this one is different, but I'd like you to let me know down in the comments below, would you have chosen the one that I did, the antique chipboard letter, or would you have gone with all of the same font? Please let me know in a comment down below. Now, while our label dries, I wanna do some more work on the body. And the first thing that I wanna do is add the little dots that you see on the replica version. And there are several products from Dollar Tree that you could use to do that. So I've seen these gems going around. I've seen um, the pink jewel border stickers. You could cut up this ribbon bling. And originally I was actually going to do the jewel sticker borders, but I'm wondering if they're just a little bit too big. So I think the ones that I'm gonna go with are actually just these pop-up stickers and they actually come in different versions of pink. And I'm gonna put them all the way around the border to simulate, sorry for the noise. I'm gonna put them all the way around the border to simulate that decoration. There we go. So it does come one sheet per pack. And you know what? I actually think I'm gonna do every other one. So I'll do this color down here and then I'll do a dark. And then I'll do a light again. And you know what? I'm actually going to use my tweezers and as you can see I am just eyeballing it but of course you could take out a ruler or make it more specific to what you you would want Now, the other thing that you wanna be aware of before you come around here is we are actually gonna add a bottle top to this. And I'm actually gonna bring it all the way down. Well, no, I'm not. I'm gonna make it stop right there so it actually looks like the bottle top. And we're gonna paint and deal with this in a little bit. But what you're gonna to wanna to make sure is that you leave room and I'm just gonna continue this way. And that's how it looks when this is finished. I do like alternating between the dark and the light pink because it gives it some dimension while it, or when you're looking at it. Now, now we're gonna put the base on. So again, the base is going to be glued onto the bottom and it's gonna look like this. The final piece that we need to prepare is our bottle topper. I found this pack of four in the party favor section of Dollar Tree, and I loved that this already had pink meshing on it, which means it'll be easy to cut up the sides. But the first thing that we need to do is paint this all pink. I'm going to be using the same fuchsia pink that I used to do the body of the, the um, heart, the body of the potion bottle. Now, because this is plastic, I'm pretty sure this is gonna take several coats. I know if you had chalk paint, this would probably be a lot easier, but I do not have chalk paint or spray paint. That's actually my preferred method. But since I don't have either, I'm just going to be covering these as, as much as I can with my acrylic paint options. We're in the home stretch now, guys. So this took pr realistically probably like 10 coats to cover completely. And then I took some of the paint down the pattern just to make it blend in with the uh, project a little bit more. Now, the last things that we have to do is we need to attach our top, attach our label, and this is the one going on here. And then as well as making a place to hang, I'm going to add a decorative tassel 
just like the ones in the movie. So let's start with applying our label and our top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it so you can see where the, the sides will match. I'm going to snip right up this side and slip it on here. Okay, real talk, surprisingly, these are a lot harder to get through, as you saw. So you're not going to need a pair of dull scissors. You're going to need sharp ones to get through the sides of these. So now, like I said, I'm just going to, I will slip it on top. It'll look just like this. And I do. I like it like that. And I'm going to add hot glue up the sides and we will add this on top right now. So I'm sorry I didn't show that on screen. However, I don't have a hot glue gun long enough to bring it all the way over here. But what I did is I just added hot glue down here and centered it to where I like because I wanted this point showing just a little bit. Now, the other thing that I forgot to mention is off camera, I thought that this label looked a little bit plain. So I did add a little bit of chalk coloration. Okay, we are almost there. The final two details that we need to finish are, I would like to add a tassel around the top, but we also need to hang it. So I picked up these tassels. They were part of the Valentine section at Joann's. And I think that I like probably one of these dark pink ones just to make it stand out a little bit more. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it around with some pink thread because I don't want the tie to be the most noticeable part. So this is what it looks like taped down. And I know I said that I was going to add stuff to this, but I actually really like the way the tassel looks and I'm worried adding anything more will draw too much attention to it. So I'm just gonna let this fall the way it does and then the very last thing that we need to add is our hanger. Now, I know when I first started this, I said that I was gonna reuse the red hanger that it came with, but looking at it now, I think it just clashes a lot. So instead, I'm going to use some cream satin ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and this is also going to match the hanger for another heart activity or heart craft that I'm doing for this same friend. So now I'm gonna add the hanger and we will call it done. Oh, second pro tip. When you cut, so since this is uh, the first cut, this is sealed already, but when you cut satin ribbon, um, it will fray. So see all this? If you do not seal it off, it will fray. So the way to seal it before you put it through anything or use it is you're going to light the edges with fire. Yes, I know that sounds really scary. Some people don't believe me. I remember the first time I was told this, I was like, no. So I'm gonna show you what to expect. You don't need a lot, just go over it. And I don't even know if you can tell a difference on camera, but now when you pull it, um, it, it melted the top a little bit. Now, this does not work with all ribbon, but the satin ribbon from Dollar Tree, I've been using it and doing this for years now. So there's just a tip to make sure that your ties don't unravel or start to look really ugly. Okay, that is it. Now, we have a unique piece of Harry Potter Valentine's Day decor. And here's what the piece looks like hanging up on a door. My friend is going to hang it up on the decorative broom that I got her for Christmas. So if you wanna see it in its final place, please make sure to follow Create Craft Costume on Instagram and you will see it there. 
Make sure that if you liked this video that you subscribe because I have plenty of other holidays that I need to help her decorate for. So next is going to be St. Patrick's Day and Easter and I have a couple Harry Potter DIYs coming your way. Thanks.